I'm Amber Davis and this is your five minute call. This is the space where musical theatre takes centre stage. From unforgettable backstage stories with incredible special guests to insights from my life and my theatre journey. We're leaving it all on the mic every single week so let's jump in. Welcome back to your five minute call with me, Amber Davis. Now, I have a sensation sitting opposite me. I feel so honoured that you're here. She is the current alphabet on tour. It's Laura Pick. Hello. Hello. Why am I so nervous? Why? I just am. I feel feel so chilled, but then I'm like... (laughs) I mean, you literally sing alphabet every night. I feel like you're like a superwoman now. Do you feel like you can do anything? No, maybe. Well, some good days. Ask me on a good day. Yeah, <laughs> it is a good day. Yes, I can do anything. The no. first thing I ask everyone, and I'd love to know this because obviously you're playing probably the hardest role known to man. <laughs> What's your pre show ritual? I ask everyone this. It's really boring, and I'm the most unorganised person. Am I, am, do I, am I running to stage for like for my entrance? <laughs> yes, I am. I just. So because I don't really get a chance to speak to people during the show, mm. I really, like, push my time after warm-up before, like, the quarter, just trying to, like, chat to people. Don't so then check I'll, in. Yeah, so it'll get to the point where I'm like, oh, God, I need to go because I need to warm up. And I'll be, like, warming up whilst putting all my underwear on and then, like, like the dresses all come in to, to get me ready and I'll still be like, I'm just having a wee. And I'll just be, like, still doing my warm-up <laughs> right until, yeah. But I was always like that and I just... So I that, that's amazing, though, because I feel like... Thinking about the role of alphabet, I'd be like, candles on, getting into my zone, <laughs> saying all my affirmations. But you're just like running around. Yeah, I think it's, it's part of who I am as well. Like, I don't want to take it. Obviously, it is. It's a demanding role. Mm. So the more seriously you take it, I guess it could be like difficult if it yeah. just is all consuming. Just look at it like more casual. Yeah. Like I have obviously I've done it for quite a while now as well. So it's just I'd rather have fun. Yeah, doing and, it. Yeah. Rather than look back and think, oh my God, I was like a wreck. Yeah. Like obviously there's a line, isn't there? But yeah, it's just I just I'd rather be able to like have a chat and yeah, because we used to do that in London, like with Sophie Evans, like after the warm up and stuff, we would go and have like mother's meeting in her dressing room, and I love I'd really that. push it until like wigs needed to come and put my wig on. I love that. Yeah, we will delve into Wicked and the other amazing things you've done, but I want to know when did you discover your voice? Like when did you think, oh, I want to do this as a career? It's all I've ever wanted to do. I think I was very lucky that my parents were very supportive from a very young age and I started going to, like, youth groups. I think yeah. I auditioned for my first one. You had to be seven and I auditioned for it the day before my seventh birthday and I sang My Boy Lollipop Aww. and I had, like, my pedal pushers on and I think, like, my platform trainers that I'd, I think I wore to go and see the Spice Girls. <laughs> um, so What a combo. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to say it's the only thing I'm good at, but it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Like, I'm not the most academic person. Mm. I had to work quite hard for any, like, grades at school and stuff, but really, like, my passion was always singing. So you were creative. Singing. Yeah. Does, where did you get... Where did you live when you were younger? Wakefield. Wakefield? Yeah. So close to here? Yeah, so close to here, yeah. So we're actually filming... In Leeds right now, because obviously Laura's in Wicked, they're in Bradford, yeah. we're in Leeds. I don't, well, I was going to say, we're going on a night out on Thursday, but I highly doubt I you'd be there. No, I think I'll be passing. Yeah. <laughs> so you were brought up around here. Did you have, like, any access to London? Like, did you go and watch shows when you were younger? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't remember going to London till I was... Oh, my parents probably killed me if I'm like missing something. But when I was like 12, like okay. we went to London. Well, I was actually part of like an impersonation competition. Wait, details. So I think I was 11, 12 and I had to sing down the phone for the first round for this <laughs> impersonation competition. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you, I don't think you'd be able to guess who I, who I was. Go on. It was Barbara Streisand. Were you? I don't sound anything like Barbara Streisand. Hang on, at 11? Yeah, I didn't sound anything like her. (laughs) But that's who I was listening. I was singing Evergreen 
Barbara Streisand's version of Evergreen down that's the phone. Hey, confidence, mm. Laura. That's confidence. And then I got through and we had to go to, I want to say it was like Bridlington or somewhere to like sing on this stage to see if you got through to the final. And it was all sponsored by Haribo. So it was like Haribo and I was such a chubby, little, <laughs> I had such a chubby little face as well. And I was wearing a white trouser suit. <laughs> Iconic. And then I got to the final and went to London. And that's my first memory of London. I feel like while we were there, we went to see... I want to say Blood Brothers. Did you? I think. So you think, is that the first show you saw? I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was. Because when I was younger, there's, there's an interview of me on Look North with my mum when I was doing this competition. I got to the finals. We'll have to find that. It's, I've got, I have to have a clip of it. And then it's like, what's your favourite shows? Like, what do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be in Chicago or Blood Brothers. <laughs> like, two shows I'll probably never be in. Like, me in Chicago. <sighs> Absolutely not. I can't dance for toffee. I do also also have a video of me singing all that jazz with some self choreography, which is actually hilarious. But yeah, so that's my first memory of going to London, and it was a planet Hollywood. Yeah, that a thing. I well, think it with was... bowling alley. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's all different now. But it was like yeah, and there was this final, and I I came I came second. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Second. Got like a lifetime supply of Haribo, which I don't think it was a lifetime. I don't know. I remember there being a lot of Haribo sweets. And that's so cool. What a cool memory. Yeah. I've got a really cracking picture somewhere of me. It's like mounted on like a Haribo thing in my white trouser suit with my like being big old mic. Yeah, being barbs. I didn't I wasn't a good impersonator. I was just a twelve year old that could <laughs> sing. And had confidence. But I didn't have a lot of confidence. Did you not? No, I was always really shy. Like, I used to do a concert every Christmas for this wonderful man who put on these dinners. And I was used to say, it was, it was, I guess it was great for growing up and doing this, but it was the talking side of it. I could stand there and sing, and I would literally stand there and sing. Yeah. Like, probably no expression on my face. But then I had to, like, learn how to do the introducing without just saying, for my next song, I'm going to sing yeah. this. Which makes a lot of sense because I've seen clips of you singing in like a concert e or like on TV. It's like, you know, you sing a song and then you go, mm. so it's not in like situ of the show. Mm. What, does that not eat you alive? Like, I hate concerts. Yeah. It fills me with anxiety. Yeah, it's terrifying. But oh my God, guys, I've got to show you a, this clip of you singing Defying Gravity. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Big Night Musicals. Oh, my yeah. God. It was it was an amazing day. Like, how do you yeah. feel? Like, how did you feel seconds before going out doing that? Nervous. But I was so excited, and it was the day that I was announced for the tour, so it was all, like, I just had this amazing team of people with me all day. We spent so long in hair and makeup, but we had so much fun. Mm. And, yeah, I was really nervous. It was Ain't Too Proud were on before me, so I was just, like, stood... In the wing and all my gear, like Ooh. waiting. And then they were like, "Oh, come!" You come, like joking, like come on. I was like, Ooh. It's really scary. I mean, I put me in the middle of a story. Mm -hmm. Fine, but if you just yeah. pull out a song and whack it, like I've done West End Live three times. Yeah, and every single time it's gone wrong. Can't hear the like. It's always really hard Ooh. to hear. Ooh. I've Gosh. done it twice. Did you do it one as Alphabet? Yeah, I did both as Alphabet. Okay, that's yeah like daunting because you can't hear yeah and then the youtube audio is directly through the mic mm -hmm. which i just think my career would be over if that happened to me <laughs> yeah it's i think there's also an element of pressure when you're doing it for a show and you are you're representing, representing. like it's because you don't want to let anyone down mm. so it is it's hard but and the, the songs are just hard anyway like you can warm up a little bit before divine gravity in the show do you know what i mean yeah oh also Mount View, mm -hmm. you trained there. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you went there? 18. So you did your A-levels and then you went? I did a B-tech. Okay. Yeah, I did B-tech musical theatre at Wakefield College. Gorgeous. And then went to, uh, so I had a great fun two years then before going to drama school at 18. Did you enjoy Mount View? Yeah, I mean, I think I've blocked a lot of memories from it. I think drama okay. school can be a very intense time and... I think I grew up being quite a big personality, like in my Amdram group circles and right. had a lot of fun. And then I think you also go to drama school and then you're surrounded by so many other big personalities that actually you can get a little bit lost. Mm. I remember like in first year we had a, <laughs> I had lovely 
housemates, but we were lived in like a mouldy house. Like the house was really mouldy. Standard. So we moved out after six months. So we had like a mouldy house leaving party. And I remember just going into like the bedroom and just being like very overwhelmed, which isn't like, and generally I'm not like that, but mm. I just felt a little bit like, Oh, this is a lot. It's a little, like, it's very Did intense. Did you feel like you weren't being like your true authentic self? You felt like you had to act or behave like everybody else, otherwise you'd get lost. Yeah, but I think I also was just a bit, I was a bit quiet. I think I was just daunted by it all. Like there's a lot of academic work to it, which, because if you're doing the degree, it's Did you like do a is. degree? Yeah. Oh, you did a degree. Yeah, so there's a lot of written work as well as the performance side. Mm. And it's just like you think, you think you're all right at what you do and then suddenly you're like Ugh. yeah but but yeah no it's i mean drama school it's a great experience i've still got so many friends. close friends and i feel like my year group have done really well there's quite a lot of people that are like doing really well yeah so can i ask what year you graduated i graduated in 2013 same year as jade yeah i started she that same year? year she was your year erdang Oh, see, in my head, Jay didn't go to Erdang. I didn't realise she went to Erdang. Yeah, yeah. Aww. So you guys graduated the same year, and yeah. then I started in the September. Oh, wow. I love that. So a couple of things you've done. You've covered Maria in The Sound of Music, Regent's <laughs> Park. Yeah. That's, I, do I remember that? No, absolutely do you not? not. It was my first job straight out of college. I was very lucky. So your first gig out of college was cover Maria? Yeah. I mean, that's it, amazing. It was very lucky and it was, we, my third year show, I did Anything Goes. Okay. And the musical director for it was Steve Ridley, who is one of the most amazing musical directors and people I've ever worked with. I really love him. He was the musical director. Rachel Kavanagh was the director. And I think, obviously I don't know, like I think he got me in the room and then I got the job, but I still like would thank him to this day for because I don't think... Like he gave you... I feel like... You know, I probably didn't deserve it out of other people. No. Well, no, I mean, there was a dance round and I can't dance. So, you know, there was probably somebody that would done more that would have been more experienced and able to do it. But you just don't, you know, sometimes it is. Who you know? All you need is somebody to believe in you. And I yeah. really felt like he gave me that shot. Did you go on for Maria? Once. Once? The day I graduated. So, <gasps> so my mum, my dad and my brother were there. I've got goosebumps. Yeah. I don't remember it, though. But it was like, I was sat in the actor's church, ready to graduate, and the company manager was ringing me and I was like, hi, he was like, oh, you're going on tonight. I was like, what? Because nobody expected it to happen. Oh, Because it's my... only a six-week run. But Regent's Park, though, it's like one of my dream places to work. It's amazing. Apart it from, amazing. I, don't, I don't want to go in the peak of summer, though, because I feel like my hay fever will kill me. Yeah. But that's amazing. It was amazing, that, but I don't like, remember. Really amazing. Yeah. Then you did, you've worked at the union... Yeah, that was, yeah, I did that after I did a cruise contract. Love that. Yeah, that was fun. Working at the union is like a lot of people's bigger skulls. Yeah, it's it was so, honestly, I had so much fun with the most amazing group of people. I was in the ensemble of Anyone Can Whistle, had like a really small little part, but it was just a real quirky production with amazing people. And I honestly just had the best time. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I think contracts like that, you remember forever. Yeah. And then, so you've done cruises as well? Yes, I did, like, a eight-month contract. I've done a cruise. On a cruise. Did you? Yeah. Who did you do it with? I did oh. it with Aida. Oh, nice. I, I, when I, as soon as I graduated, I went oh, for six wow. months to the USA and Caribbean. Do you have a good itinerary? Yeah, we did a lot of Boston, New England. So we did, can like, a lot of Canada Gorge. in, like, the autumn, and that was beautiful. We did go to Bermuda. We had, like, overnights in Bermuda, which was a lot of fun. Stunning. Like, in the sea at 1am, just living your best life. I love that. Yeah, it was great. So I was, I was actually talking to Carl, who was on last week's episode, about cruises and I feel like sometimes people are scared to go on a cruise because they feel like they're going to jeopardise their chance in the industry and I just don't think that's the case. No, I think it's a great job. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Save money, see the world. 100%. Get drunk in Bermuda. And also, like, you're still doing what you want. Yeah. So I'd, before I did the cruise, I'd had, I'd had Sound of Music, I'd done Panto and then I'd had nothing for two years and it was like at the point where you start to go, why am I doing this? I'm getting to finals for things and then suddenly you're not even getting in the room for things mm. and you can really just like forget why you're doing it mm. and I think for me doing the cruise and then doing the show at the union like I was 
I got a bit of what my mum called it my sparkle. And my sparkle back because I was actually just singing for a job yeah. and performing for a job. I love that. Yeah. Look, Laura's literally playing Alphaba on tour and you were unemployed for two years. Yeah. Like, in those moments, how did you stay motivated? I don't know. I had I had many a blip because I was working in retail at Bravismo. And, um, Love Bravismo. Yeah. Shout out Bravismo. Shout out Bravismo. Also there, made some absolute friends for life. Some of the best people I've ever met. I had a lot of fun, mm. went on some really amazing holidays, but then still auditioning and then having to get time off work for auditions and stuff. And I remember going home one weekend and being like, I just don't want to do it anymore. I just can't do it. I think mm. I got an audition, audition through for something that I wasn't, that was like, I was a dance round. Why am like, I in for it? I can't dance and I didn't want to go back and do it. And But I think you just have to remember, and this is what I say to people, you have to remember why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. You have to remember like how much you love it. Like just go and sing in your bedroom and just be like, oh, I want to do, like, I yeah. do want to do this. But look, look, if you'd never have carried on and just been like, this is just a blip... You wouldn't be sitting here now playing mm. Alphaba. Like, there is always something around the court. Just carry on. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Like, I even look at the West End now and I think, is there anything there for me? Probably not. But I'm not disheartened. I'll just take a little sabbatical yeah. after Pretty Woman if nothing yeah. comes up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. Now it's time for a quick interval. Go and powder your noses and we'll see you in two. I've got to tell you this story because it's the funniest thing ever. You were about to talk about it with me before we were recording. I said, oh, no, 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 wait. So I'd gone in first round, Back to the Future. I was signing in and I knew who you were. I knew you were in town with Wicked at the Mm. time. And I was signing in to do this audition and I just saw a name that had signed in (laughs) before me. And it said Laura Pick. And I thought to myself, I may as well not be here. Wow. I thought, how am I going to get this right when she's in? Who were you in for? For Lorraine, yeah. But I also saw, I didn't see your name, but I saw other names on there. I can't remember who it was, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that. Obviously, I I didn't, you did. But But the only, well, I just think their George was really young. Well, no, I also think, I don't know how right I even am for it in general anyway. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun. I really like, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the auditions, which I think, is a nice thing. I thought the team were really nice. And yeah, yeah. when I saw you'd got it, I was like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> it depends. It's like a jigsaw, isn't it? Basically, yeah. if you, when they're casting, it's a jigsaw. And I know that they'd found Oliver Nicholas, who was playing George, and they had to match. He's He was young. Mm. Like, it was his, basically his first job out of college. Yeah. And they had to match someone to look as young as him. Yeah. And I've had so much Botox that yeah. like they just thought she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, doesn't everything happen for a reason? Because I, I you met know, my baby. Your love. I met me love. So there you go. Right, let's get into Wicked. Okay. Uh, you've probably done a thousand and one interviews about about playing Alphabet, but I just mm. want to know the nitty and gritty. <laughs> and I basically put up on our Instagram yesterday that we may have an Alphabet in. Yeah, but what I loved about that was Instagram, like there's writing of it said alphabet oh, did it? <laughs> i might have an alphabet i was like that's so funny i bet people who aren't in this industry will like, think what the hell is she talking about alphabet? i just want to talk a little bit about obviously you were stand by and then got the role i want to know all about like mentally how that was for you and then i've got loads of questions that they've asked great so when you booked the gig in town yeah was it original like for stand by i when i was auditioning i didn't realise I was in for standby. I'd gone through, I'd done the dance call, I'd done <gasps> cover alpha material. Then I, but I'd done the dance call before, so I kind of knew it. So I was like, okay, I've got this. I'm going to, I'm going to be fine. It's a it's, hard it's, dance round. It's a really hard dance round. But once it's in there, like I've never forgotten it. Mm. I still like when they're doing Oz Dust on stage, I'm doing one of my changes and me and one of our wiggies, like, we do some of the choreography, like, whilst <laughs> we're doing the change. Like, it's only, like, a little bit of it. It's really cute. Yeah, so I'd done all that and then at one point I, they sent me, like, Nessa material. Oh! So I think I was in for first cover Alpha, second cover Nessa at one point. And then I remembered doing my final and I think I did Nessa in my final as well as Alphaba. And then when I basically got told that, like, my tapes had been sent... It was like that. You, I was in for standby, and I was like, 
I don't really know what that means. Mm. What does it mean for our listeners? So it means that you are, you could go on any day. So in town, it's different, obviously different to tour because on tour we have no like holidays really. But in town, like you go on any holiday, any sickness, you could go on mid show, like you always just kind of have to be. So you, just, are you do you always have to be in the building? Yes. So is I feel like there's like way back when it used to be you just had to be in the area. Okay. But now you have to be in the building. Yeah. And there's no guarantee that you'll go on for the week. No, yeah. I think the longest I went was six weeks without going on. I stand by. Yeah. Who were you covering, Alice? Yeah. She's a. I know. She's just yeah. ruthless, and yeah. she she can just go, 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 yeah. go. I was like, oh, come on. Yeah. Wow. Come on. And then you played Elphaba for the fifteenth anniversary. Yeah. And you've also emergency gone in and done yeah. Elphaba. Epic. Yeah. What What was that call like? It was fine. It's always like I remember. So when we when I first left, then it was still around the times of COVID and mm. stuff. And I got COVID the week after I'd left, so that took me a while to get over that. And then I remember, I think they were suffering with it in town, and so I had to go back. And then was on for a two show day. You know, like you haven't done it. I know it'd oh. only been it hadn't been long, but you know when you're like, God, I've just had COVID. Like I just feel and I've got to go and whack out two shows. But then other times it would the call would come. And you'd be like, great, yeah. Yeah, I'll Like, buy, especially, I'll, I'll like, I had one, one that it was... I knew I wasn't available on the Saturday because I was going to a wedding. So I was like, yeah, I can go and whack out a Friday night and then... Pop to the wedding. Yeah, and then buy going to a wedding tomorrow. Love that. Yeah. And then, actually, just being on standby, going back, it was nice. Yeah. So it was nice to go so and just go and hang in, out. Dip, and dip in and out. Yeah. You can, like, how many Fieros have you done it with? Or Glindage, you know, that's so yeah, fab. Yeah, so many. And I love that because you get, you probably, it all feels so different. Yeah, yeah. everyone is so different. Mm. Like when people like compare, I'm like, you can't compare. No. Like you can't compare an Elfborough against another Elfborough because no. everyone is so different. Mm. Like, yes, the show is like a machine and it works the way in, the way that it does, but everyone has, everyone sounds different and yeah. has different elements. Yeah. Right. I need to ask you these questions, otherwise we're not going to have time. So these are from the public. How long does it take for you to warm up your voice? So I do, I think it's like a, probably like 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes max. I've got like three separate warm-ups that the vocal coach that Wicked got us in with, Claire Underwood, she's amazing. She's like sent me them and I do them every day and now people walk in and like laugh and we've started doing it. Because there's like a part that's like, oh no. And ah, like, oh okay. right. Like we just do it like, part of, like a speaking part of it. Do you and think so, that, you'd do that warm-up for any role. Yeah. So I, I think if I was doing something that was a bit more, like, soprano-y, although I'm far, I'm not in that place right now, <laughs> you'd I'd have to go a bit more into the range and stuff. But, yeah, it's got an, enough of everything I need. Fab. Like, one on, the, one on, like, a bubble, a straw, one that's, like, tongue and soft root, and then one that's, like, the actual alphabet warm-up. This is more just for me to know. Do you like steam or anything like that? Mm, yeah. No, and the nebulizer. I'm not as much of a nebulizer gal. I've tried to be, but I'm like, when do I do it? So I'd, I'd do, if I'm feeling a bit dry or a bit like yeah. I feel like I need the extra, I'll nebulize. But I'm a morning, evening steam gal. I'm steam like last thing, don't speak. After. Yeah. And you do that every day? Yeah. Morning and night? Yeah. I never used to do it morning. Now I do. I'll do morning, even just for like 10 minutes and then voice rest for like 15 minutes before I start to like speak. Love that. Yeah. Love that. What song or section of a song is the most difficult to sing as Alphabet? Probably the end of Defying Gravity. Do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's... When I was coming back to the role, that was what I was struggling to get back in my voice. It's like just finding it again. Yeah. But I think even sometimes from doing it at concerts when I wasn't doing the show... If the sound's not great, you end up putting it into, like, bad places. So then it was just trying to find my place again. Again. Yeah. And somewhere where you can sustain eight shows a week. Yeah. And you do eight shows a week. And um, I haven't been as much recently. I was quite poorly in Edinburgh and then I was really poorly in Birmingham. I've never been, had so many... Post-COVID. Ill, ...like, illnesses in my life. But I'm just working back up to that eight-show week now, which, like, it feels, like, doable. Yeah. But I love, I love you sitting here and be like, I'm still working up to doing eight shows a week. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like Viv, Viv's a big thing. Viv, yeah. And I feel like 
sometimes I have to be honest with, with myself. Like there's there's moments on the tour where we do a double double back to back and I'm just like if I'm going to be here for the weekend I probably should take this matinee off and give my voice a rest you have to be like yeah you have to be open and honest like we know our our muscle you yeah know? our instruments our it's, instru- it's athletes we're athletes yeah it's like you wouldn't just go and run a marathon or well, some people would I guess but like, but you know, you have to train. Yeah. And it it was it's been really hard because when I was in town, I was doing eight shows a week. I was I did like five weeks without going off before my holiday and stuff. So coming back and not being as strong has challenges. Of course it does. Yeah. But also there's so many elements to touring that is more challenging than being in London because then at least you're in traveling. London you're going home every day. Yeah. You're going back to your home comforts, to your dog, your own bed, you know, all stuff like that. Whereas like on tour you might be staying somewhere that you don't feel as yeah. great or as comfortable or there's like air con or just different elements that just make it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. And is your company manager like very relaxed about yeah, it? Yeah, she's great. She's really that. great. Yeah. And you have an amazing swing anyway. I do. <laughs> but like this, I just think it's so important to have like, you know, all our company is amazing, but you've got like the people that you know that you can go to, like, and that will like pick you up off the floor yeah. if you're feeling down. And like Jade is one of those people, and like she's, she's very special. Really love her. I love her. This is quite an easy one. What act do you prefer, one or two? Act two is easier. Is it? Yeah, I, but I I do love Act One. Like I have so much fun. Yeah. But Act Two really, no good deed is the big thing. And, it's and it best. just goes a lot quicker because it's only, it's like an hour. Yeah. In act two. And for God. Oh, I love yeah, God. I love it. I love it. But I do, I love act one. Like, I have so much fun. Like, it's the only time in the show I have time off stage. So I have, like, during courtyard, I've got a bit of time. Like, I can either go for a wee. It's my one Lovely. break. Lovely. Go on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, no, I can, well, I'm always in the wing unless I go for a wee. But yeah, and just, like, chat, try and chat to people. Yeah. I've got one here. Please tell us how long it takes to get out of the alphabet get up. So it depends how thorough I'm being. Okay. And I try and be as quick because, like, especially like in Bradford, we've got I've got people I go either walk home with or get a lift with. So people have to wait for me, and like okay. Carl is one of is one of them because I'm living with Carl at the minute. And so I do try my best to be quick. So how what really, time do you come down? So we come down about twenty past, and I'm ten. Yeah. Or just after. Hell. And I'm generally leaving quarter to ten to. That's not bad. It's not bad. Do I look good? No. <laughs> but. What do you use to take it off? Demologica. Okay. Yeah. Do you shower? Yeah. So shower, get it off. What about, yeah. ha- have, you got, have you ever got green hair? In my hairline, yeah. I've actually just had more blonde put in my hair, but have to just not get it, can't get it all yeah. blonde or in the roots or anything because then it'll just go green. And is your skin okay? Yeah, I had a really struggled with it in Bristol. I had breakouts and stuff, and I like I generally have quite good knock on wood skin. Yeah, I had a bit of a breakout there, but seem to be on top of it now. I feel like I've got all the right products and products. stuff, and I'm. It's nice, but do you have to like contour and everything with the green? I don't do it. You don't do it. No, no. Oh, I well, love that. So you just sit there. Yeah, I sit there on TikTok or like just having a chat and a laugh. And how long does it take to get in? It depends, but generally, like, I'd say wig prep and green, like, 45 minutes. Quite long, though, isn't it? Every day. And then the interval, I don't get an in... Like, I'm sat in the chair having my wig and my makeup all redone. So you take it off? No, they just have to... Act 2 is heavier. Like, so it's, like, a smoky eye, eyelashes, more contour. I guess anywhere that I've rubbed it off and sweated... Um, oh my god, this is so freaking yeah. interesting! I'm so glad we've got you. In. Redo my hands because they—they're the thing that go. So you're telling me you sit there in between shows eating dinner green? Sometimes, yeah. Love it. Sometimes I'll shower. Sometimes I'll shower but still keep the green on because I'll just like want to wash my body. Yeah. But it's kind of easier for them to be starting on a fresh face. Yeah. Then. But then I think like that's maybe what wasn't helping my skin was taking it off and putting it back, back on again on. a lot because your pores would open yeah you gotta be careful what part of the show actually sounds easy but is quite difficult like because if you I think like you shout quite a lot don't you because well you have to... i i don't shout as much i used to shout a lot in town and then like especially when i feel like when you're standby if you're only doing one or two shows a week or here and there you kind of you probably do shout a bit more and you can like just give it Beans. Like beans, belt, everything, 
for wh whenever you're on. Mm. But now it's the sustainability of it. Although Alice used to be very full out, and I don't know, it's, hats off. I like, <laughs> don't know how she did it for as much as she did. Yeah. Vocal cords of steel. But now I shout a lot less. But then it's the acting challenge of it making it seem like mm. you're shouting, I guess. Yeah. But I sometimes think, like, for good, sounds like it would be easy. But when you've done, when you're on your seventh, eighth show of the week and you're tired, it's in your head, like, a lot of it's, like, more in head voice than mm. it is, like, belting. So that's harder when yeah. you're tired. Like, I used to find, like, in town, I'd have no speaking voice and, like, my, like, higher register would be really gone, but I could belt. That yeah. is, it is crazy. That's like Natalie Paris. Sometimes she'll come up to me because she's like big, big belt. And she'll go, I've got no siren at all, but she'll belt her tits off. Yeah. And I sometimes find like when it's in your body, you can get it out. Yeah. It's somewhere. Yeah. And then finally, the last question I've got for you, because honestly, I could sit here and talk to you for hours about this. <laughs> what is your favourite thing about being Alphaba? <laughs> I don't know. I it's all I've ever wanted to do. So when I was younger it was like I want to play Elf if that's all I do. Yeah. Like I'm happy with that. I just think so many we get so many people coming to this see the show and like you get a lot of fans that come and see it so many times yeah. and they just really must connect with her because she's so misunderstood. She's so she's so special. She just wants to fight for what's right and it's not her fault that she's green, you mm. know, and she it's just it's a really beautiful message for people to see because you shouldn't judge people by by what they the, yeah, don't judge like the book by its cover. Yeah. You know. She's just very, very special. Oh. And obviously the songs. Like it's not it's not like I love singing the songs. Do you? I love it. Like so much. I love that. Yeah. Because there's you can like I know there's been horror stories with Alpha, but, but I just think you sit here, you seem so comfortable. You literally are going to do a show tonight, and you're just mm. like, I love it. Yeah, I do love it. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I've had like when I was struggling in Edinburgh, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, I can't do this for a year. Yeah. And I think when being being ill so close together and so early on in the tour was challenging then coming to Bradford knowing I've got people coming to the majority of the shows mm -hmm. I don't have the time to be off for two three days like and just actually being able to trust that you can do it I think it was actually I was really scared and actually now with this is our last week and I'm like okay it's okay you've done it nothing's nothing's gone wrong I haven't let anyone down like, you could never let anyone down. Either. Well, you do. Like, you don't want to let people down that have like had the tickets booked for a year and it's like, oh, sorry, I'm not on. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, no, that's the worst. That yeah. is the worst. Yeah. But thank you so much for coming on. You've been an absolute delight. And I cannot wait for our listeners to have an insight of Alphaba. Hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. See you next week. Bye.